Good afternoon, welcome to We Repair. So today I have got something a little bit different. Um, so I'm working on an Acer Aspire PC. Um, so this one is, well it does, it does something a little bit weird. So I've got it plugged into power, nothing else at the minute. Hopefully you can see this top button here. And it will just, um, hopefully you can see that little light. It'll turn on for a few seconds and not turn off. And then it'll turn on for a few seconds and it'll turn off. <laughs> so I'm not sure what's going on there. It's pulsing on and off. My suspicion is it's either going to be maybe a motherboard issue or a power button issue or um, maybe power supply related. So let's open this up and have a look. I've just taken the two screws out of the back panel. It really isn't any more complicated than that. And the whole lid will just slide off. Um, they're quite compact these, so it makes working on them a little bit of a challenge. So what we need to do is get the CD drive out of our way first, and then we can get to all the gubbins underneath. So all you do, you unclip the three clips on the top here, push it away from you, and it will just pop down. Just keep pulling, the cable will be long enough. And there is also a little inbuilt connector here that you can disconnect. I'm going to have to put this down so we can do that, because I can't do that with one hand. There we go, disconnected like that. And then on the end here, got one screw here, one screw there, and the CD drive should pull forward. Now what we are gonna have to do is just disconnect the power lead, and sorry, SATA lead even, and the power lead uh, before we can get that anywhere near loose. So we've just disconnected those two. So we'll undo our two screws. I need a bigger head from my screwdriver, so let me just grab that Ooh, and apparently drop a screw in my PC in the process. There we are, pull that out. Got my bigger screwdriver head, so let's just undo this. And then under here we should find our hard drive as well. So if you ever want to uh, replace your hard drive, and this is how you get to it. So we should just be able to undo that now. And then just being careful. So under here, we've got two more connections, as you can probably just, just make out. So there you are. We've got two more connections just here, which is our hard drive SATA and power. So we'll just open that one up and open that one up. So there you go. So there's our hard drive. So if you ever wanted to get your hard drive out, you'd undo the four screws on the bottom and slide the whole thing out. So, we've now had the guts of this. Let's just take the screw out and drop down underneath. Right, so, let's just have a look and see what's going on here. So our, our power lead and things all come back to here. So in this corner, so I'm gonna disconnect that, like that. And what I'm going to do first of all, which is going to seem mad with a <laughs> with power plugged into the thing, but I'm just going to see if I can jump in. There you go. So again, it's doing exactly the same thing. What I wanted to do is just see if it was the power button faulting um, and, and causing it to pulse on and pulse off. So it's not that. So we've clear we've. We've clarified that, it's not that. So it's, at this point, it's either gonna be mains power, I would have thought, just here, or it's gonna be an issue with the motherboard. Now what I've got is this is a donor power lead, power supply. I use this for testing, so with all the leads. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna disconnect the existing power from this board, and then we're gonna have another go and see if we can jump it with that. So I've got one little lead back here, just a four pin and one little lead at the front. So again, this is like a combined one. So we'll disconnect those. And then I've got another lead here that I can plug in. And that will hopefully fit. There we go. And let's just see if we've got a four pin on this. There we are, I've got one just here. So I'll just plug that one in. Again, because these are quite tight, this is actually quite a fiddle to get these cables plugged in. All right, so that's that plugged in. Take our power lead and plug it into our donor power supply. And again, we're going to just jump this and see if it stays on. So no, at that point, it's still not booting up. It's just doing the pulsing thing. 
So we've now ruled out our power supply, we've also ruled out the button. So next thing we will do is a minimal boot, which is essentially we just disconnect as much as we can from the board. Um, so we are real bottom rung stuff here. So it's just the board on its own. So we'll just take this card out. I'll just try it without that card first. Because uh, at this point, the only things that we've really got plugged into the fan, the RAM, there is a couple of cards here actually. So I might just disconnect these various audio and USB card, uh, bits and bobs. It's just, I'm going to disconnect all of this because that takes us out to the front USB hub and there is a card there. And that takes us out to the front audio as well. So I've disconnected all these, front SATA, front USB. Just make sure they're all completely disconnected, which they are now. So we're now running this board at a real minimal boot. So let's just try it one more time. So again, we can see it's doing the same thing because the fan's pulsing on and off. So it's not that. Let's just plug all this back in. There's no sense in it being unplugged if it's not the problem. So we tried it with next to nothing plugged into this board now. So the only thing I can do really at this point is remove the RAM and see if I get beep codes. Because um, if it doesn't beep at me, then it's likely that we've got a faulty motherboard. Let's just disconnect the RAM. Just press these little switches at either end. Like that. Just off power one last time. Let's jump the board on. And immediately we don't get any beep and it's done exactly the same thing. So at that point it really can only be a failed motherboard. Now at a glance I can see there's nothing funny going on with the capacitors. Sometimes you see these little tall things, these capacitors are puffed up um, which would indicate then that there's some, some kind of failure to hardware. I can't see anything going on there um, because of the age of this. I'm not going to waste any more time with it. It's, it's just really not worth it. You could buy another motherboard for it and replace it, uh, but it's not going to be the far off, far off the price of buying a whole new unit. So there really isn't a lot of point. Um, so at this point, I think that's really where we're going to stop. We've uh, reached a bit of an impasse where we can't repair this, which is a shame. We've tried uh, minimal boots. We've tried no RAM, tried essentially eliminating the power button and the uh, power, power supply. So there isn't a lot more really you can do with it at that point. I'll just plug this cable back in and thread it back through to make our life a bit easier later. And then I will give the owner a call and just deliver unfortunately the bad news in this instance. It's not a repairable one, which is a shame. Anyway, I will speed this up so you don't have to watch me struggling to reassemble this and uh, then I'll come back to you in a minute.
So there we are, everything's reassembled. Um, unfortunately, in this case, this is what I would class as a beyond economic repair job, which is a bit of a shame, really, um, because it's a nice piece of kit. Um, but there's not a lot we can do. It, again, it is just pulsing on and off. Um, so it has had a complete strip down. I've done the power supply. I've tested with taking the button off. I've jumped it with a minimal boot and I've even tried it with the RAM out. The fact that we're not even getting any beep codes would say to me that it's, it, it is just a dead motherboard in this instance. So I, I will let the person know, I will give them the option to, to replace the board, but I would imagine it, they'd probably say no on the basis that it's gonna cost them at least a hundred pound for the board. And the whole unit's probably worth less than that. Anyway, if you liked the video, you found it useful, um, you've learned something about stripping these down, then please drop me a like, uh, leave me a comment, and uh, yeah, just continue to subscribe and watch. Um, and uh, I will keep posting videos on a regular basis. Anyway, thank you for watching.